Great North Woods to the Rock Mount Coast and streaming live in HD worldwide at foxpangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, a serious crash in Corinth took the life of one after a farm truck ran off the road. Plus, COVID and other respiratory diseases are on the rise in Maine. We'll hear from experts at the CDC on how you can keep your family safe. And good news for local fire departments. A new batch of firefighters straight from the academy are moving into jobs around the state. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith and thank you for tuning in this morning, this Monday morning. Um, I've heard some pretty heavy rain outside of our studio in Bangor as of the past hour or so. And scattered showers are likely throughout our viewing area today. So let's get a check of that forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Alrighty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by SR1 Companies. Visit SR1 in Herman, Turner, Manchester, and Orono for the best prices on trailers, campers, tractors, heavy equipment, and more. SR1 Companies, where New England's largest selection meets unbeatable prices. Alrighty, here we go. This morning, some areas of dense fog greeting us near parts of Bar Harbor and the parts of Washington County, and even areas further off towards the north as well. As you get things going today, we will also have to watch out for some showers and thunderstorms as the fog clears up. We're already seeing some showers and storms this morning. It's even caused some flooding issues right about in here. There's been some flood alerts issued at times this morning here. Those are expiring for this morning as well, but we will be watching on and off for scattered showers and thunderstorms across our neck of the woods today. There's a little bit of energy here. It is right about in here. It continues to track off towards the north and east, and it's very localized just across the state of Maine, and that's about it. So future cast showing more scattered showers and storms this morning, and again this afternoon. We'll get those out of here. Later on tonight, we'll be under a partly cloudy sky with areas of dense fog on the way overnight. As for the winds for today, not too bad. Roughly at around 5 miles per hour or so, maybe a few areas up to 10 miles per hour. The winds calm down tonight, and that will allow that fog to develop, and we're looking pretty good as we start things off Tuesday morning. Scattered showers and thunderstorms today. Highs in the mid-70s, and that southeast wind at around 5 miles per hour. Already, your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing some showers and thunderstorms possible with temperatures in the 70s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. Thank you, thank you, Devin. We'll get a look at that forecast a little later on. Well, starting off this morning, one person has died following a crash involving a farm truck in Corinth on Saturday. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, a report of a serious motor vehicle crash on the Beans Mill Road in Corinth came in just before 4.30 p.m. Authorities say the crash took place near the intersection of Beans Mill and Exeter Roads. When deputies and fire officials arrived, they reportedly found a large farm truck off of the road in the woods. Authorities say the lone male occupant was trapped between the passenger side of the truck and a tree. Advanced life support services, including LifeLight, arrived, but the man did not survive. The crash is under investigation. Two people have been seriously injured after being thrown from a vehicle during a crash on Friday night. According to the Penobscot County Sheriff's Office, the PRCC received a report of a serious motor vehicle crash at approximately 11.10 p.m. Deputies and the Eddington Fire Department responded to Route 180, the Rebel Hill Road. Authorities say a lone SUV had lost control, skidded off the roadway, and rolled over several times. Both occupants were thrown from the vehicle in opposite directions and sustained serious injuries. Authorities say witnesses reported seeing the vehicle traveling at dangerous speeds on Route 9 prior to the crash. The crash remains under investigation. The search for a missing Holton man who was lost in a plane crash in 1972 is still ongoing, thanks to efforts by his younger brother and hundreds of community members. A ceremony was held in his honor on Saturday. Our Kelly Warren has the story. It's just a heartbroken thing. Billy Hogan has been missing for over 50 years. In 1972, he embarked on a flight from Connecticut to Holton, Maine, his hometown, but he never returned. His brother says his last May Day was in the Portland area. His younger brother, Jerome, hasn't given up on his search to bring his brother home. We're going to find the boy. On Saturday, a military ceremony was held at the Maine Air Museum to honor the missing pilot who served in the Holton Army Guard. I went up in the plane with him a lot of times. Him and I were close. We were real close. 
something like this here today, this was the hardest for me today to reach up that flag. You don't want to go on forever with nobody knowing what what happened to my brother. I wouldn't I wouldn't stop if it was me. No, you, you keep right on going. Multiple leads have been found over the years, and while many of them were confirmed not to be remains of Billy or the 1972 Satabria aircraft he flew, Bryden says there are a couple of recent leads, including unidentified bodies found in the ocean, two of them matching Billy's height. We, we, have, uh, we have a long way to go, but uh, one step at a time, we'll, we're going to find Billy. To learn how you can help with the search, visit our website at foxbangor.com. When we find him, I want to put him with his mother and father. In Bangor, Callie Warren, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. A Waterville man serving time for murder at the Maine State pr Prison died on Friday. According to Department of Corrections Commissioner Randall Liberty, 50-year-old Stephen Lee died just before 11.30 a.m. His death was attended by medical personnel. In 1997, Lee began serving a 40-year sentence for murder, as well as concurrent sentences for robbery and burglary. His earliest possible release date was June of 2032. Police are searching for a male suspect in a connection with a re reported robbery at a gas station in Portland. According to the Portland Police Department, police were called to the Riverton gas station on Forest Avenue just after 2 p.m. Police say an unknown male entered the gas station with a white mask and a baseball bat and demanded money from the clerk. Police say he left with an unknown amount of cash heading towards the Riverton School. A canine attempted to track the suspect but was unsuccessful. Police say the subject is said to be 5 foot 7 with yellow teeth and a brown goatee. Investigators are asking anyone with information to call 874-8575. A main covered bridge is closed after a truck loaded with gravel tore right through the floorboards. That truck ended up in the Presumpscot River. It happened Friday on Babs Bridge along Hurricane Road at the Gorham Wyndham Town Line. Originally built in 1840, the bridge was replaced in 1970s in the 1970s when it burned down. The bridge has a three-ton limit. The main Department of Transportation says the dump truck was loaded with crushed gravel. This would have made the weight of the vehicle several times the posted weight limit. They expect Babs Bridge to remain closed to traffic for at least several months. The bridge is almost 50 years old uh, and unique as this one is, and you have a vehicle that is, is, appears to have been terribly overloaded, uh, something like this happens. The driver was not seriously injured. Maine DOT says Babs Bridge is inspected at least every two years, and the last inspection took place at the end of last month. As summer slowly turns towards fall and winter, the U.S. Center for Disease Control, Response and Prevention is warning that COVID and other respiratory diseases are on the rise. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke with experts at the CDC and Department of Health and Human Services to learn more about how to stay safe. CDC, our colleagues at HHS, public health agencies, clinicians, pharmacists, and many others have been hard at work preparing for this upcoming season to protect the health of Americans. According to Mandy Cohen, the director of the U.S. CDC, COVID numbers have started to rise. She says scientists predict that while we won't see pandemic level cases, we will see a spike during the fall and winter when people spend more time indoors. Cohen adds one of the best ways to protect yourself from getting COVID is to get an updated vaccine. So while the COVID virus continues to mutate and change and change faster than the flu virus, our underlying immunity from prior vaccines and prior infections provides some protection. Like the flu shot, which Cohen says you should also get, the new COVID shots are also customized for the current dominant strains and were just approved by the FDA on Thursday. The good news is so far that the updated vaccine closely matches the KP3 family of viruses that continues to grow in dominance. Aside from vaccines, the other important step to stay safe this fall and winter includes testing, which is why the federal government is restarting their free COVID test program. 
So as all of you prepare for travel and gatherings with family and friends throughout the 2024 holiday season, don't forget to go to covidtest.gov to order your free tests. And even more importantly, don't forget to use these free tests when you are concerned that you or your loved one may have COVID. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Those free tests really come in handy, speaking from personal experience. All right, well, with Labor Day weekend around the corner and kids heading back to school, police are cracking down on impaired drivers. The main Bureau of Highway Safety and police are telling drivers to drive sober, sober or get pulled over. It's part of a nationwide campaign to help combat impaired driving. To support the effort, the Bureau has awarded federal funding to law enforcement agencies across the state. According to the Maine BHS, 60 people lost their lives in Maine last year due to crashes related to impaired driving. And they've been tracking data that shows 24 people have already died this year due to impaired driving. In 2022, about 30% uh, of our fatalities in Maine were caused by a drunk driver. So that put us in the top eight of the nation. Okay, I want to see us like being the last one in the nation when it comes to these stats, right? The campaign will run through Labor Day in an effort to reduce crash risks and raise awareness. Holden police say they take part in this campaign three times per year, but they're always on the lookout for anyone driving under the influence. As the state continues to grapple with a shortage of affordable housing, a local developer is looking to construct a 500-unit apartment complex on Stillwater Avenue in Bangor. Developer Justin Freeman says the multi-unit apartment complex will be constructed on the 42 acres of land on Stillwater Avenue between Chase Road and Longview Drive. Freeman says each apartment will be around 500 to 1,000 square feet and will include appliances and a laundry mat on site. They're currently in the planning approval stage and are working on getting all the necessary permits. Freeman says he's hoping to keep rent at a reasonable level. Uh, the construction costs are relatively high, uh, especially the last few years. Um, so all of a sudden the landlord or developer has to charge $2,200, $2,400 a month to get into those units. And, and there's a market below that. There's a market significantly below that, that that does seem underserved. So that's where we were aiming. According to Freeman, they're aiming to construct a high percentage of one bedroom apartments, but if the need for two bedroom apartments grows, he says they can easily readjust to accommodate the demand. Freeman says he hopes to be pouring concrete in May of next year. All right, the time now is 8:12. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, a Midcoast Elementary school will see delays to starting the school year after asbestos was found in the attic. We'll see how the cleanup is going, but before we take a break, let's get another quick look at that forecast. Scattered thunderstorms are likely throughout the day today. I know we had some heavy rain just now. It's kind of wrapping up in Bangor. Highs in the mid 70s for your Monday. Dropping down to a low of 58 degrees overnight. It will be partly cloudy, some areas of fog, so that may slow you down if you're pretty early on the road tomorrow morning for your morning commute. Tomorrow, though, partly cloudy, nicer than today. Highs of 82 degrees. We'll be right back. A Marine. A vet. Our Congressman Jared Golden is getting things done for Maine. Golden worked to build a new hospital for vets struggling with mental health and substance abuse. Brought Democrats and Republicans together to protect our lobstermen and jobs. And Golden is fighting to ensure that America remains the world's energy leader. Jared Golden is delivering. Call Congressman Jared Golden and tell him to keep getting it done for Maine. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. We don't get paid unless you get paid. We call it the Lowry Guarantee. They win or it's free. You got nothing to lose. Just call the twos. Call 222 When Northern Power Watch Company, located in Bangor, wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Northern Power Watch provides outstanding pressure washing, window and gutter cleaning services to eastern and central Maine. Call Todd at 881-3680 today for a free estimate. Chevy lets you begin every day fully charged. So you can go farther. And so can your money. Tow with confidence. Plus, stay connected with available OnStar technology. For summer adventures, Chevy's got you. 
Current qualified lessees can lease this Equinox for around $209 a month. Visit your main Chevy dealer. most dangerous stretch of beach in the world. Let's go, go, go. We work, we fight, we don't give up. We lose people, but we save people too. Breathe, just breathe. Breathe, breathe baby, breathe. Rescue High Surf, series premieres Sunday, September 22nd on Fox. The discovery of asbestos in a 70-year-old Midcoast Elementary School will delay the start of school. Brad Rogers looks at what's being done to remove the asbestos and insulation in the attic and why the superintendent believes there are no health concerns. Vermiculite, a common insulation back in the 50s, was put in the rafters back when Bodenham Community School was built. It contains some asbestos. A contractor hired to lay new wires discovered this material had fallen onto the newer fiberglass insulation in the drop down ceiling of some classrooms. We've done an air quality test um, and those came back all good to show that there were no signs of asbestos in the air in all the all areas of the building. Superintendent Heidi O'Leary says the detected levels of asbestos is only one fourth of one percent. Even so, the district wanted to make sure all the asbestos and old insulation was removed. We'd rather err on the side of caution and make sure that we fix it now and rather than bringing our students and, and staff in and having something happen. Today, a local abatement crew started removing the material. We have masks and respirators on. Uh, it's pretty much just a big gas-powered vacuum, and it sucks it up, puts it in these special bags, which goes in the dumpster. This crew will also be removing and replacing the fiberglass insulation with new insulation above the classrooms. The work will delay the start of school by at least one day. Yeah, you're hoping it doesn't go past that. I hope not. I mean, it may, but... We'll, we will see once we get into it a little bit better. Superintendent O'Leary is grateful this didn't happen after the start of school. There's really no good time to have such a big project, but I'm happy that it happened before school started and the students were in there so that we can we could get a jump on it. With the old insulation containing only a small amount of asbestos and with air quality tests coming back good, the superintendent says there are no health concerns from previous asbestos exposure. And that was Brad Rogers reporting. The Penobscot County Fire Academy's 2024 season wrapped up on Thursday, and some of the graduates are currently applying their newly learned skills to Bangor's front lines. We talked to first responders who have been with the fire department for over a year, getting on-the-job experience. They now have a professional national fire certification, which they say provides them with invaluable skills for handling fire and rescue needs anytime and anywhere. The Penobscot County Fire Academy is for a national level certification. Uh, the department itself puts on a very, very rigorous uh, entry program and uh, the Penobscot Fire Academy uh, just adds to that, to, uh, to this wealth of knowledge through our experience and through our, our crews that we work with. For more details on the Academy and the graduates, visit our website at foxbangor.com. Families got to learn more about Maine's native plants and insects on Saturday, especially butterflies, at the Fields Pond Audubon Center's annual Butterfly Festival. The festival offered everything from a butterfly-themed parade to a native plant sale, and even an opportunity to watch insects and have them identified by Maine Audubon staff. Organizers say the festival is a way for kids to better connect with nature, wildlife, and insects. You know, we hope that people leave with a, a sense of how, that they're connected, that they have a role to play in helping to improve our environment. The Fields Pond Audubon Center hosts events year-round. You can visit our website, foxbangor.com, for more information. That event in particular was fun for kids and families, but that native plant sale is great for gardeners as well. Um, native plants are really good for the environment and beautiful as well, so I love to see it. Very cool. Okay, the time now is 8.19, right after the break. Three brothers in Dover Foxcroft are running a lemonade stand for charity, of which has already raised thousands of dollars for local cancer care. We'll hear all about it as Good Morning Maine continues. If you've
you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. You can hire Lowry and Associates, and there's no fee unless they win your case. Just call the twos. We don't get paid unless you get paid. We call it the Lowry Guarantee. They win or it's free. That's the Lowry Guarantee. Lowry and Associates settled my case for $400,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 Central Maine Barns and Sheds, quality products built right here in Newport with a strong attention to detail. We have an incredible selection of pre-made options and would be more than happy to custom build a unit specifically for you. Central Maine Barns and Sheds has financing options available, including a rent-to-own program. We provide free delivery and setup within a 30-mile radius of any of our locations. Check out our full inventory at centralmainebarns.com or call for more information, 368-6177. Are your basement walls bowing, crumbling, or failing? Hi, I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. Our stable walk wall system offers a patented, affordable, and permanent solution to save your foundation walls. It stabilizes, fills voids, and structurally repairs, leaving a new smooth surface. All the strength of new walls. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basementy. My daughter's got some uh, different names she calls me, different, you know, like the, the unemployed middle-aged TikToker is one of her go-tos. A Maine dad is turning his collection of humorous texts from his teenagers into his first book. It's always just been to make people laugh, and, you know, I think that's a, you know, a great part of life. And we spend so much time, like, on what divides us that just, I think, laughing about the silly stuff we have in common is, is um, you know, is a good thing. And so we'll talk with Chip Layton tonight on Fox 22 News at 10. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. Well, for those who drove through Dover Foxcroft on their way to the Piscataquis Valley Fair this weekend, you may have spotted the Maine Adventure Boys selling lemonade. Our Doug Banks tells us more. This isn't your usual lemonade stand. I think that today is going to be a good day. The Maine Adventure Boys are three brothers who produce videos on YouTube. When we were 10, we used, probably used it the most because we would go out in the woods and build forts. Since 2022, the three brothers have parked their bikes and set up shop on the front lawn of the Gary Funeral Home in Dover Foxcroft. I got a message from their father, Ben, and he asked me if they could come and use the lawn again this year. That's an easy yes from all of us. Thank you. And the boys don't pocket the cash. The money raised from their lemonade stand goes towards two local causes, both of which help those battling cancer. Me and my brother Parker kind of stayed up all night one day thinking about how could we make the most amount of money, and I was like, you know, we don't need it. We could donate it. The Christine B. Foundation supports those battling cancer by giving access to healthy foods and nutritional information. And Sarah's House of Maine provides temporary lodging to cancer patients and their loved ones while receiving treatment. The latter was founded by the boy's late aunt, Sarah Robinson. She passed away with a brain tumor about 13 years ago. It's always nice to raise money for them. You know, we've had, we've had kids just do lemonade stands on the funeral home lawn before, and we would welcome that again, but opportunities like this are very, very special to all of us here. The boys say they've raised over $2,000 since they first started the lemonade stand, and they plan on raising even more. Here you go. Thank you. you want any lemonade? In Dover Foxcroft, Doug Banks, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Sounds good. I love to see it. All right, the time now is 8.23. Time to get a full look at that forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Monday, your full weather forecast brought to you by SR1 Companies. Visit SR1 in Herman Turner, Manchester, and Orono for the best prices on trailers, campers, tractors, heavy equipment, and more. SR1 Companies, where New England's largest selection meets unbeatable prices. All righty, here we go. Areas of dense fog greeting us near parts of Bar Harbor, up across the northern parts of the state as well, and even across parts of Washington County. We'll get the fog out of here, but we will also still have to watch for showers 
and some thunderstorms possible right about in here. We've had some development this morning. That's a lot of flood alerts to be issued at times as well right about in here as some of these showers and storms are not moving very quickly. We'll be watching for sky showers and storms on and off across the region today. Moving forward as we watch this little wave of energy. It's very little. Here it is right about in here that continues to track off slowly to, to the north and east. The rest of the northeast looking pretty good. We just have to get this thing out of here and then we're looking pretty good. So here's future cast for today. Sky showers and some thunderstorms possible. More of it across the western parts of the state as we head towards the afternoon period but can't totally rule stuff out further off towards the east. Also notice the clouds break up for a bit so we'll call it a party cloudy sky this afternoon. Also we'll calm down tonight. Party cloudy areas of dense fog possible and it may be widespread as we head towards Tuesday morning so be careful with that. We'll get that out of here. Tuesday looking like a very nice day. Tuesday night we're good for a bit and so late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning maybe some fog again but notice some showers maybe a few rumbles of thunder on the way by early Wednesday morning. As for the rainfall for today very localized some spots can see a lot of rainfall but otherwise some spots can see a quarter of an inch maybe a little bit more or less before we're all finished up for today and we'll have to wait until Wednesday before more rain moves in so overall this week maybe up to three quarters of an inch of rain between today and also Wednesday before we're all finished up with very local with, with lower amounts possible and a few other spots. As for our temperatures our average temperature is 78 degrees we'll do middle 70s today then lower 80s for you Tuesday we're back in the lower to middle 70s Wednesday all the way through at least Sunday so overall not looking too bad in the temperature department moving forward. Scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way today with highs in the mid 70s and a southeast wind at around five miles per hour. Coming up for tonight party cloudy areas of dense fog it could be thick at times with lows in the upper 50s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow party cloudy with highs in the low 80s and a southwest wind at around five to ten miles per hour. Alrighty let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by SR1 companies. Rain moves in Wednesday again with highs in the low 70s. Party cloudy Thursday with highs in the mid 70s and middle 70s again for your Friday under a mostly sunny sky. I'm Jared Golden and it's a privilege to represent you. Whether in the Marines or in Congress, being able to serve my fellow Mainers is reward enough. Unfortunately, some here try to profit off this privilege by trading on insider information in the stock market. That's why I'm working with Republicans and Democrats to ban members of Congress from trading individual stocks. I'm Jared Golden and I approve this message because Congress shouldn't be about getting rich, it should only be about serving you. Stay connected to stay healthy. Stay connected to stay covered. For all of us who are main care members, changes are happening. Don't go without health insurance. Update your information at mymainconnection.gov by scanning the QR code on your screen. Don't wait. Main care reviews will be completed by October 31st. Join over 300,000 Mainers who have already renewed their coverage. Just update your information by scanning the QR code on your screen or visiting mymainconnection.gov. This summer is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai models. All backed by America's best warranty. Plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey. Hurry into the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. But act fast. The hottest deals of the summer won't last. Get in and get away now. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month or get 1.99% APR or up to $1,250 bonus cash. Hurry in to the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. Ah, taking the time to savor Thomas's crunchy yet soft bagels. Thanks, Tom. It's a uh, Tom, actually. Right, Tom. 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 Did you do that on purpose? Tom. Tom. How have we got to Tom? Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. First time you try Bounce, it hits you. Your laundry feels way fresher and less wrinkled. You start to wonder, if I put a sheet of Bounce on my boss, will it make his wrinkles smoother? Bounce can't do it all. But for better laundry... Put a sheet on it with Bounce! Israel launched a wave of airstrikes against Lebanon's militant group Hezbollah in what the IDF is calling a preemptive strike. Hezbollah retaliated to avenge the killing of one of its top leaders last month, leading to the heaviest exchange of fire in months as well. Fox News correspondent Alex Hogan has more from Tel Aviv.
Early Sunday, Israel and the militant group Hezbollah exchanged heavy fire. The IDF called the strike preemptive, claiming it destroyed thousands of rocket launchers in Lebanon. Hezbollah says it carried out a barrage of rocket and drone attacks in retaliation for the killing of a top military commander last month. We are attacking and removing threats from Hezbollah. The IDF is doing and will continue to do everything necessary to protect the citizens of the state of Israel. Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah says the group is going to assess whether further attacks are needed to be carried out after the group initially said that the attack was complete. While Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said that the country could take all measures to protect itself to return civilians to the evacuated towns in the north and that this is not the end of the matter. Both sides claim they only aimed at military targets. Whoever hurts us, we heard him. The cross-border clash was one of the most intense exchanges in months and comes as high-level ceasefire talks between Israel and Hamas continue in Egypt. I am not very uh, optimistic about it, and I don't think that Hamas has the correct, uh, how should we say, incentive uh, in order to finally say, yes, we agree. The fighting instead renewing fears of a wider war spreading across the already tense region. I think the Iranians are contemplating an attack on uh, Israel, but uh, decided for now <clears throat> to put it on hold. The White House says that it's monitoring the situation. The Pentagon says since the attack, it's ordered two aircraft carrier strike groups to remain in the Middle East. In Tel Aviv, Israel, Alex Hogan, Fox News. And the Biden administration responding to those strikes between Israel and Hezbollah early Sunday morning. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson has more from the White House. A second aircraft carrier, the USS Abraham Lincoln, has just arrived in the Middle East, taking station in the Gulf of Oman, not far from the Theodore Roosevelt strike group, who's been at sea for the past seven months. Earlier, Israel's new ambassador to the United Nations said... This will help deter Iran. It sends a very clear message to the Iranian, stay out of it, stay out of uh, this uh, war. Uh, I hope they will listen to those uh, threats, uh, but we need the support. Biden's top military advisor, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown, is in Israel Sunday to share intelligence and help coordinate efforts. He was in Jordan Saturday, as you can see here, meeting with his Jordanian counterpart. U.S. Navy now has two carrier strike groups in the region. Both came from the Pacific, leaving no None there right now. The Navy has also positioned four guided missile destroyers in the eastern Mediterranean to protect the skies over Israel from incoming ballistic missiles from Iran or potentially Yemen. Guided missile submarine Georgia, armed with over 150 Tomahawk cruise missiles, also remains in the Med. Here's New Jersey Democratic Senator Cory Booker earlier. We know the most urgent issue right now is ending this awful conflict in the Middle East, uh, bringing about a ceasefire and stopping this from expanding. Uh, to a wider arena. When it comes to those ceasefire negotiations, Senator Lindsey Graham had the following suggestion. If I were the state of Israel, I would tell the Ayatollah, if these people do not come home alive, the ones that are left alive, and if we don't get the bodies of the fallen, we're going to blow up your oil refineries. That's the only way you're ever going to get the hostages released is to put pressure on Iran. While leaving the West Coast, President Biden ignored reporters' questions about this latest scrap between Hezbollah and Israel. The president begins another vacation on the East Coast at his Delaware beach house. And later, his national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, departs for Canada. At the White House, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. In other news, RFK Jr. speaks on Fox News Sunday after his decision to suspend his campaign and endorse Donald Trump on Friday. The decision reportedly was slammed by his family members as a betrayal, but he says he wasn't driven by animosity. Kennedy and Trump agreed to form a unity government that appears to be the extent of their relationship at this point. Kennedy says there are no guarantees that he'll be offered a position in the Trump administration, even though Trump has said he'd be open to the possibility. Fox News polls last month show Kennedy pulling support from Trump in key battleground states like Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. So Trump is hoping he can draw some of those backers to his camp. And coming up on the second half of the newscast, we'll have our weekly segment, Market Watch Mondays, where we check out some cool and unusual Facebook marketplace finds. We'll be right back. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. Lowry & Associates can be your lawyers, and there's no fee unless they win your case. 
We don't get paid unless you get paid. We call it the Lowry Guarantee. They win or it's free. That's the Lowry Guarantee. Lowry and Associates settled my case for $195,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 Hammond Lumber Company has been a trusted partner of professional contractors, do-it-yourselfers, and homeowners for generations. It's the level of trust that Hammond Lumber has earned by providing an extensive selection of products and materials from industry-leading suppliers with guidance and support through every stage of any project, including delivery of materials throughout Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company is, has been, and will always be your building project partner. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith, and today is Monday, August 26th, 2024, and today is National Dog Day. So for all the dog moms and dads out there, before the day is done, make sure to find your favorite photo, or three, or four, or five, or six, of your pup and share it on social media. Also, we here at the station would love to see, maybe we'll put them on the, the 10 p.m. news or the 6.30 news, just an idea. So you can send us your dog photos at our Facebook page, Fox Bangor, don't be shy. You can just send us a message, of course, as always with news, news tips as well. But you can also email us at tv7news at wvii.com. That's tv7news at wvii.com. That's seven as in the number, not spelled out. Okay, moving on. Now for some history. On this day in history in 1629, English Puritan stockholders of the Massachusetts Bay Colony pledged to emigrate to New England under the terms of the Cambridge Agreement. Hundreds of years later, in 1907, Harry Houdini escaped from chains underwater in 57 seconds at the Aquatic Park in San Francisco. Um, a few weeks ago, some viewers might remember, we had an escape artist um, come on the morning show. He uh, was performing for, I think, the entire duration of the Bangor State Fair, and he actually brought on, you might remember if you saw this segment, some Harry Houdini um, handcuffs that were Harry Houdini's, and he used them in one of those stunts like that, and I got to wear them. I was a little intimidated. So he did have the key though. It was all fine, it, it ended up fine, but very interesting. But yeah, I don't know if I said this, I can't remember if I just said it, but he escaped from chains underwater in 57 seconds at the aquatic park in San Francisco. Oh, of course, now that I say it out loud, I remember I said it. Okay, moving on, in 1920, the 19th Amendment became part of the Constitution of the United States, giving women the right to vote. The next presidential election that happened after the 19th Amendment elected Woodrow Wilson into office. In 1971, Bobby Orr signed a five-year contract with the Boston Bruins worth $1 million. The first contract, or excuse me, the first million-dollar contract in NHL history. Orr is widely acknowledged to be one of the greatest hockey players of all time, and his jersey number four has been long retired by the Bruins. He played during the days before helmets being required. In 1981, NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft took photos of Saturn's moon, Titan. It doesn't look real. It almost just looks like abstract art. It's so just um, strange looking. But okay, uh, moving on now for birthdays. All actors today. Actor Chris Pine turns 44 today. He's kind of repping a new look with the beard and long hair. I like it. I think it looks good on him. Actress and singer Kiki Palmer turns 31 today. She does all sorts of stuff. Not only is she an actress, but she also has a very successful podcast. Something to check out if you're into that type of thing. And actor Macaulay Culkin turns 44 today. The child star. He's doing well now. Okay, uh, moving on now, it's going to be uh, a day full of scattered showers in certain parts of our viewing area. I know Bangor was already hit pretty hard. It's kind of tapering off right now. So let's get a check of that forecast with meteorologist Devin Biggs.
All righty, thank you very much. Happy Monday. Your first weather forecast brought to you by SR1 Companies. Visit SR1 in Herman, Turner, Manchester, and Orono for the best prices on trailers, campers, tractors, heavy equipment, and more. SR1 Companies, where New England's largest selection meets unbeatable prices. All righty, here we go. This morning, some areas of dense fog greeting us near parts of Bar Harbor and the parts of Washington County, and even areas further off towards the north as well. As you get things going today, we will also have to watch out for some showers and thunderstorms as the fog clears up. We're already seeing some showers and storms this morning. It's even caused some flooding issues right about in here. There's been some flood alerts issued at times this morning here. Those are expiring for this morning as well, but we will be watching on and off for scattered showers and thunderstorms across our neck of the woods today. There's a little bit of energy. Here it is right about in here. Continues to track off towards the north and east, and it's very localized just across the state of Maine, and that's about it. So future cast showing more scattered showers and storms this morning, and again this afternoon. We'll get those out of here. Later on tonight, we'll be under a partly cloudy sky with areas of dense fog on the way overnight. As for the winds for today, not too bad. Roughly at around 5 miles per hour or so, maybe a few areas up to 10 miles per hour. The winds calm down tonight, and that will allow that fog to develop, and we're looking pretty good as we start things off Tuesday morning. Scattered showers and thunderstorms today. Highs in the mid-70s, and that southeast wind at around 5 miles per hour. Already your hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period, showing some showers and thunderstorms possible with temperatures in the 70s. Your full five-day forecast is coming up. All right, moving on now to Market Watch Mondays. This is quickly becoming my favorite part of Mondays. Um, this is where we check out local Facebook Marketplace finds. These are all things that will be in Maine. If you folks at home have any cool finds that you want to send us, make sure to send them to our Facebook Messenger or our email. I already um, said those about five minutes ago, so you can go to our website if you need a repeat. But let's dive right into it. Let's see what has been found on Facebook Marketplace recently. Okay, in Livermore, it looks like a antique gas pump has been adapted to have a TV on it. I'm not really seeing the TV. Do we have one more photo of that? There we go. There's another. Okay, so there's just a screen within it. Very cool. $1,800. Um, definitely something for a collector. Very cool. I'm sensing that would be perfect for a man cave or something of the like. Okay, let's see the next one. In Saco, we have a vintage clown costume to scare your friends and family members, or just great Halloween costume. This is kind of a very cute Halloween costume, but I know people have clown phobias, so, <laughs> so that could be something. It's 30 bucks. Halloween is right around the corner. Um, don't worry, I checked this morning. It's only 66 days away. Oh, here is the money shot. We have a video of someone modeling it. This is lovely. <laughs> So it's a part of it is blow up or they stuck something in it to make it extra silly, but I love it. Great energy. Very silly and Sako, 30 bucks. <laughs> Vintage cloud costume. Okay, moving on. Um, a 1991 yacht. Oh, this is in Gloucester, Gloucester, Maine. Okay, $300,000, a yacht can be your own. A 1991 Hatteras CMY70. Okay, you could live here. Wow, look at, that's a full size fridge. That kitchen is almost like mine's only slightly larger. <laughs> you could live on this boat for $300,000. That's a little less than the median home price in Bangor right now. <laughs> so just buy a boat, cruise around. Sounds like a good plan to me. Okay, do we have one more? We do. Jim Davis, Real Art of Garfield and Odie. And it's a, and there's it's certified. Okay, right in Eddington. So this is close by to our studio here in Bangor. A thousand dollars for some bona fide Jim Davis art for Garfield fans out there, cartoon favorites, our fans. Um, very cool. What a great prize to have for any collector. A grand in Eddington. I love it. All right, very unique. That was fun. Right after the break, um, we will have our new sports reporter, Jack Webb. We'll have sports. We'll be right back. Main Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Main Paving specializes in commercial or residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. I served as a Democrat in the Maine Legislature, and I voted for Jared Golden, but I can't do it this year. 
Jared Golden changed in Washington, and he's given our vote in Congress to Biden and Harris. Now Mainers are getting hurt by inflation and higher taxes. I used to believe in Jared, but he sold us out. Restoration Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. AMHG Works LLC, American Made Home Goods, located at the Rennie's Plaza in Bangor. Come check us out. We're open seven days a week featuring artisans, crafters, and manufacturers from across the United States, where everything is meticulously designed with care and pride. We also have a wide selection of pet accessories and treats. Let us be your new favorite store. We look forward to seeing you. Brent Michaels, Party Gras Music Festival, Labor Day Weekend Extravaganza, September 1st, Main Savings Amphitheater. With special guest, Warren. Hit music mashup with D. Snyder. And Firehouse. Tickets on sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com. Main Paving is Eastern and Central Maine's go-to for all things paving. Main Paving specializes in commercial or residential paving, grading, seal coating, and crack filling. And get this, refer someone that schedules a job and receive a $250 Visa gift card. Currently booking for this year. I'm Carl Olberg, Chief of Police. I can always tell when somebody's lying to me. Welcome back in, folks. We'll start with the hometown hero. On Friday, I got the chance to check in with Old Town Zone, Andre Miller. Whenever my number's called, just kind of go out and do what I do. Former Old Town and UMaine standout Andre Miller's professional football career has been an uphill battle. However, the climb is nothing new to the former All-CAA wideout who began his collegiate career at Division III Husson before transferring to UMaine. The last couple of years been kind of tough with dealing with different things going on, going on and off the, the field, like just freak things happening. Miller began his pro career on fire at training camp with the New York Giants before unfortunately fracturing his forearm later in the preseason. The G-Men brought Miller back to the practice squad once healed, but a hamstring injury just before next season forced the two sides to part ways. When I asked what kept him going after all that, he had a few different answers. I just love to compete, and that's really what the driving force is, along with, I think I'm, I'm pretty good at football. So <laughs> for me, it's just being like, honestly kind of addicted to, like this is, it's just really all I know. That addiction to the game brought Miller to the Great White North. Up here, playing in Canada for another opportunity. Miller is now a wide receiver for the Ottawa Red Blacks of the Canadian Football League. With an already stacked Red Black wideout room, He's waiting his turn on the practice squad, and he's using lessons learned in the NFL to stay ready. I try to approach everything and take care of my body and do all the right things, take my notes, get extra catches after practice, do whatever I got to do, get with the quarterbacks and talk with them as if, like I said, like I am playing that week. For now, Miller will keep climbing because he knows things can change in an instant. I know I have a lot of football left, and it's just been a rough couple of like last two years, but I know it can turn around just as quick as it was going bad. So, Reporting from Bangor, I'm Jack Webb, ABC7 Fox 22 Sports. It was great to catch up with Andre. So good to see him living out his dream playing professional football. And those who know him know everything is going to go according to his plan. Fall sports season is in full swing, and we'll head to Brewer to check in with a couple teams beginning with field hockey. After a 10-4-1 record last season, the Witches will look to build on that momentum this fall. The program has been gradually improving over the years, and this year's senior class is at the forefront of that progression. We've worked really hard on building that program and developing younger players, um, and we've got a lot of talent this year, and this year I would consider us a veteran squad. Um, and so we're really excited for our schedule and to get going. It's exciting. Definitely, definitely sad, but it is exciting. I'm looking forward to the season. The team made it to the quarterfinals of the state tournament last year. They've been working together all summer long to prepare for this season, and that work has them feeling confident about their games and goals ahead. Honestly, we're shooting pretty high. I mean, we feel pretty good this season, especially from all the last seasons leading up. Our record's been getting better, so I think we're pretty ready. Obviously, a state championship. We put in the work all summer, and we all have great skills, and we work really well together. 
Alley flag dropping back to back gems two days in a row here at Fox 22. We head across Hederick Field now where the football team has been working hard as well. The Witches football team is looking to bounce back after last season and that all begins with their new head coach, Fred Lauer. Lauer is an assistant principal at Brewer High School and said it took his players a second to adjust, but after the quick transition, it's been full steam ahead. The first time uh, in the summer when we got in the weight room, uh, they were kind of feeling me out, didn't really know because they've only seen me as in that other role. Um, but now they see this different side of me, so I think it's been really good. I mean, I don't think we've skipped a beat. You know, he came in here, he took charge, and I think it's been great. Coaches and players say they've had a great first week of preseason and have been developing the team's identity for the fall. We've been, we've been moving along We're real good here. We're getting all our stuff in, getting, getting all the fundamentals down, getting all the new guys up to speed. We'd be overly physical with other teams, and we always, our goal is always to win games. I mean, football is a physical sport, so our team, we want to be a physical team and play some good football. Now that is a football player right there. I will take 11 Caleb's out there for my football squad any day of the week. That is unfortunately all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. For too long, veterans across Maine had to travel hundreds of miles to get the medical care they needed. So in Congress, Marine veteran Jared Golden changed that working to build a new hospital here so veterans can get mental health and substance abuse treatment closer to home. Now Golden's working to help more veterans get the care they deserve and protect the Social Security and Medicare benefits you've earned. Tell Jared Golden to keep putting Mainers first. At Toyota's national sales event, we've got a long lineup of vehicles for summer fun, like Camry, RAV4, Highlander, BZ4X, Tundra, Corolla Hybrid, Tacoma, Sienna, Corolla Hatchback, Sequoia, Prius Prime, RAV4 Hybrid, Land Cruiser, GR Supra, Toyota Crown, 4 You could get $1,000 in financing cash toward a luxurious and spacious Highlander. Plus, get two years no-cost maintenance, all from the longest-lasting brand, Toyota. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. After an accident, the insurance company often wants to rush you into accepting their fair offer. Don't sign away your rights. I didn't trust the insurance company. They were wanting to settle fast and cheap. How much is your case worth? It's probably worth more than you've been told. I called Joe. I found out what my case was really worth. Say yes to maximum compensation, to everything you deserve. Call the firm that has been getting justice for Mainers for 50 years. Tell them you mean business. Transform your home with Ashley Furniture's factory authorized sale at the Furniture Gallery. A queen mattress and frame, a six piece dining set, a sofa chaise, a reclining sofa, a set of two recliners, or a complete bedroom set for just $5.95. Six amazing options for under $600. The Furniture Gallery's factory authorized sale ends soon, so don't miss out on these incredible deals. Hurry in to the Furniture Gallery, shop online, and visit our Facebook page for more savings. The Furniture Gallery in Augusta, Bangor, Newport, and North Windham. Well, folks in southern Maine will need to remember to pack their lunch today as it's the first day of school for many in Maine. York School District is among the schools that will welcome students this morning. The York superintendent says he's excited for the new year but worries about transportation issues. Allison LaPierre sat down with school leaders and has more. I think opening week of school was a lot like the opening day at Fenway Park. And I think it's exciting. It's buzz in the air. I think kids are happy to get back. Teachers can't wait to get going. It's just a really good time of the year. Tim Doak, the York superintendent, says he is happy about the amount of applicants the school received this summer and that they were able to fill the new teaching positions. Though, the need for bus drivers is still high. Let's mayor does need help with that. Um, the York families rely on that transportation. It's a great working relationship, but yet the lack of drivers has really made us think differently about how we're going to transport kids. York's operation manager, Monique Tahirno, says the town needs at least nine bus drivers, and right now they only have six. We really need the help. Uh, if you have little ones that aren't yet in school, you can bring them with you to work. You can bring them with you to work. You don't have to pay for daycare. The York School District and other main schools are paying for on-site bus driver training. This comes with incentives too. We are offering a $3,000 sign-on bonus for uh, individuals that are not CDL 
and then $5,000 for CDL drivers right out the gate. And she says it's not just about the money, but the experience as well. They come into work and they interact with the kids and they, they love what they do. It is not just a paycheck to them because they don't need it. They do it because they want to do something and they enjoy kids. All right, now here's meteorologist Devin Biggs with our full weather forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Happy Monday, your full weather forecast brought to you by SR1 Companies. Visit SR1 in Herman Turner, Manchester, and Orono for the best prices on trailers, campers, tractors, heavy equipment, and more. SR1 Companies, where New England's largest selection meets unbeatable prices. All righty, here we go. Areas of dense fog greeting us near parts of Bar Harbor, up across the northern parts of the state as well, and even across parts of Washington County. We'll get the fog out of here, but we will also still have to watch for showers and some thunderstorms possible right about in here. We've had some development this morning. That's allowed some flood alerts to be issued at times as well. Right about in here as some of these showers and storms are not moving very quickly. We'll be watching for scattered showers and storms on and off across the region today. Moving forward as we watch this little wave of energy. It's very little. Here it is right about in here. That continues to track off slowly to, to the north and east. The rest of the northeast looking pretty good. We just have to get this thing out of here and then we're looking pretty good. So here's future cast for today. Scattered showers and some thunderstorms possible. More of it across the western parts of the state as we head towards the afternoon period, but can't totally rule stuff out further off towards the east. Also notice the clouds break up for a bit, so we'll call it a part of sky this afternoon. Also we'll calm down tonight. Part of the areas of dense fog possible, and it may be widespread as we head towards Tuesday morning, so be careful with that. We'll get that out of here. Tuesday looking like a very nice day. Tuesday night we're good for a bit until late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. Maybe some fog again, but notice some showers, maybe a few rumbles of thunder on the way by early Wednesday morning. As for the rainfall for today, very localized. Some spots could see a lot of rainfall, but otherwise some spots could see a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more or less before we're all finished up for today. And then we'll have to wait until Wednesday before more rain moves in. So overall this week, maybe up to three quarters of an inch of rain between today and also Wednesday before we're all finished up with very local with, with lower amounts possible and a few other spots. As for our temperatures, our average high temperature is 78 degrees. We'll do middle 70s today, then lower 80s for you Tuesday. We're back in the lower to middle 70s Wednesday. Wednesday all the way through at least Sunday. So overall not looking too bad in the temperature department moving forward. Scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way today with highs in the mid 70s and a southeast wind at around five miles per hour. Coming up for tonight, party cloudy areas of dense fog. It could be thick at times with lows in the upper 50s and the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow, party cloudy with highs in the low 80s and a southwest wind at around five to 10 miles per hour. Alrighty, let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by SR1 companies. Rain moves in Wednesday again with highs in the low 70s. Party cloudy Thursday with highs in the mid 70s. And middle 70s again for your Friday under a mostly sunny sky. A Marine. A vet. Our Congressman Jared Golden is getting things done for Maine. Golden war to build a new hospital for vets struggling with mental health and substance abuse. Brought Democrats and Republicans together to protect our lobstermen and jobs. And Golden is fighting to ensure that America remains the world's energy leader. Jared Golden is delivering. Call Congressman Jared Golden and tell him to keep getting it done for Maine. Whether you have a $15,000 fender bender or a surgery case worth a million dollars, call the twos. I walked away from my car accident with minor injuries, but I called the twos and they still got me $23,000. I needed multiple surgeries after my accident with a big truck. I called the twos, and Lowry & Associates got me $700,000. Big cases and small, we handle them all. Call us. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22, 22. This summer is the perfect time to get away with a great deal on your favorite Hyundai models. All backed by America's Best Warranty. Plus three years or 36,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. Add more joy to your journey. Hurry into the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. But act fast. The hottest deals of the summer won't last. Get in and get away now. Lease an all-wheel drive Tucson for $229 a month. Or get 1.99% APR or up to $1,250 bonus cash. Hurry in to the Hyundai Getaway Sales Event. When the Coach House Restaurant wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. The Coach House Restaurant, family dining at its best with fine home-cooked meals, delicious homemade desserts, and a large menu of tasty offerings for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Oh, 
another morning to savor the crunchy nooks and cranny splendor of a Thomas's English muffin. Tom, which is a nook and which is a cranny? That's a nook, cranny, 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 nook, cranny. I mean, they should be teaching you this in school. Huzzah! A toast to breakfast. Law enforcement apprehended some four-legged escape artists in Greenbush. While on a routine patrol, Penobscot County Sheriff's deputies came across a few goats that appeared to have escaped through a fence. But they weren't on the lam for long. The Penobscot County Sheriff's Office says they were quickly captured and safely returned to their owners. In a Facebook post, the Sheriff's Office said, quote, We're not sure if this makes them farmers, but they did a pretty good job. <laughs> All right, looks like those escape artists are home safe now. I'm glad to hear. Looks like we're running out of time this morning. We'll be back tomorrow on ABC 7 and Fox 22 at 6 a.m. sharp. I thank you very much for joining us. If you missed anything today, you can always head to foxbangor.com and don't forget to send us your dog photos. Have a great day. Five words or less. She's the hottest thing to come out of Atlanta since Atlanta! And she's more humid! Mr. Sloan!